after the changes and nerfs to ball lightning, you might be wondering if it's even worth playing anymore. Well, the answer is yes, mostly. Let's talk about it. For the skills on this build, the first couple points don't matter, but we do get one point into potent warding and then three of them into elemental dominance. After that, we of course have shimmering flame shield and shimmering teleport, max out glass cannon, one point into elemental attunement, and then we definitely get the enhanced ice armor rune. This is going to give us that mana regeneration that this build desperately needs. On the next tab, we have three into lucky hit. The reason we go lucky hit is because one of our enchanted abilities, which is ball lightning itself, has a chance every time you critically strike to cast a free one. And with how mana hungry this build is, that's extraordinarily important, especially now after the nerfs to ball lightning. Now, the other things in this tab, you want to go lightning spear with the invoked lightning spear rune. You want three points into conjuration mastery and then three into mana shield and protection. In the ball lightning section, you obviously max out ball lightning and you go the wizard's ball lightning because it it has a chance to spawn crackling energy, which in turn gives you not only cooldown reduction, but bonus to your mana. This little passive right here, Invigorating Conduit, is what gives you the mana every time you pick up a crackling energy. In the ultimate tab, we've go Unstable Currents and then three points into Electrocution. This is going to reduce the damage that you take, which is important because you're mostly in melee range with this build. It's kind of annoying sometimes, but it's not. It's still pretty strong. And then lastly, for the key passive, we have overflowing energy. Crackling energy hits an extra person, which is totally fine, but it reduces the cooldown on your unstable currents, which is even more important. I didn't say this in that entire section, but the other ability that you have enchanted is teleport. You just want more mobility. You want to be able to move from pack to pack as fast as you can. Now for the aspects, the main one that we're going to go for is gravitational. This is absolutely integral to this build. It makes your ball lightning orbit you instead of doing whatever the hell it does without gravitational. And then the other ones you want to get are storm swell, conceited, shredding blades, and control. Now for the defensive aspects, you go snow veiled, disobedience, and then prodigy is a really good one for support. It's going to keep giving you mana every time you use one of your cooldowns. That's pretty standard. Most of you know that. Some of you don't. This is this might be your first time playing a sorcerer. Welcome to the party. It's a shit show. <laughs> now, the primary stats on this one are not very different, even though the stats are quite different here in Season 4. They've kind of consolidated a few things and made it a lot easier for people to understand. But what we're going for with this build is you definitely want bonuses to mana almost first and foremost, because this is such a hungry build. Second, you want cooldown reduction, again, because that's going to feed you mana every time you use something. Attack speed is going to allow you to cast really fucking fast once you get enough crackling energies out on the battlefield. And then, of course, lastly, you want ranks to your ball lightning. On the defensive side of things, cooldown reduction, again, is pretty important because you can, instead of using your cooldowns offensively, you can use them defensively. Damage reducing stats like armor and all resistances are very important, and so is plus to your bonus maximum life or whatever. Now for the Paragon in this game, it's always kind of daunting getting into the Paragon tree. I only speak from personal experience. Every time I open this up, I kind of get a little bit of like, oh my God, what do I put my points into? And that's why I rely on sites like Max Roll because it's very good for players like myself who have either ADHD or just some other kind of excuse to not be able to focus on anything for longer than 10 seconds. And uh, the, their guides are always very cut, dry, clear, concise. They explain why they pick this or explain why they pick that. On the Paragon board that, that we have, for example, on this build, for start, we have the Elementalist Rune. Then secondly, we have the Elemental Summoner with the Charged Glyph. After that, we have the Enchantment Master with the Reinforced Glyph. Following that one, we have Ceaseless Conduit with Territorial. After that one, of course, there's Burning Instinct with Destruction. After that, there's Frigid Fate with Adept. And lastly, but not leastly, we have Searing Heat with Exploit and that's going to give us our bonus vulnerable damage. Now, I say this in every video, but you can kind of go whichever route you want to go when it comes to these Paragon boards. I like to take one of their guides here and kind of shift maybe 30 points around to just make it a little bit more of my own, and I tailor it to whether I need more defensives because I'm dying too often, or if I need more offensive stats because I'm not dying often enough, but I'm also not killing fast enough. You know what I'm saying? So it's really up to you whatever you want to do with the Paragon board. Just kind of suit yourself. Go with what you feel. Now, some of the end game gear that we want to go for is Talroshes, because that goes on every single sorcerer build so that almost doesn't even require any explanation raiment of the infinite is almost absolutely integral because every time you teleport you pull everything towards you which then obviously kills them because they're now in your ball lightning orbit flicker step is a big one because that actually lowers the cooldown on your unstable currents by a shitload every time you evade through targets and then god slayer kind of does the same thing as raiment of the infinite where if you hit an elite or a boss it's going to pull all the mobs around it into you thus just making you kind of this lightning-based chainsaw of destruction. That being said, the playstyle on this one is interesting because you're kind of a melee mage more than anything else. 
you roast all of your mana on the first two to three casts of ball lightning to ramp up and then that's when the fun begins crackling energy starts dropping like a birthday pinata and that's when you turn into a fucking 1970s disco ball or at least you did it was it was honestly a lot more exciting than in the previous couple seasons but it's still pretty fun to play right now the main goal is to keep the party going from pack to pack and you might need to use your cooldowns for a quick mana battery in between just to kind of keep the spiral going and i will say objectively speaking this build still has just about the same aoe clear as it did previous to the nerfs but it's only just okay or even a slightly above average on killing bosses now i put it up on the pit clap meter and we got a decent running four minutes and 41 seconds being completely unoptimized so that's kind of good to start out there's obviously faster unoptimized builds out there, but coming from where it was, where it was like one of the fastest, if not the fastest clearing build in the game, this is pretty much expected. I will say with that though, it doesn't feel like the same build that it once was. It had a lot of that exhilaration when you played it, and now it kind of doesn't because it's a little bit slower. I, I am gravitating towards everything else these days, and I'm no longer really interested in Arc Lash or Ball Lightning. I'm excited to see them kind of make a comeback with the stat changes, but all in all, I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10 for its current state. But that does bode the next question. What are you playing this season in Diablo 4? Hopefully you enjoyed this kind of content, and if you do, do me a favor and maybe subscribe to the channel or like this video so more people can see it. Both of those are free, and they really help out the channel here. If you ever want to catch me live, I do stream here on YouTube like once a week, so stay keen on the announcements tab in my Discord. But hey, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and if you're bored, YouTube recommends this next one for you. Happy grinding travelers, and we'll see you in Sanctuary.